Hello friends, welcome to Tom Science. In this lecture, we will discuss about the performance evaluation of boilers using indirect method. In direct method, the efficiency of the boiler can be calculated using output divided by input. That is, mass of steam generated divided by the amount of heat given to the boiler. This method is very quick and very easy to find out the efficiency of the boiler because only few parameters are required to find out the efficiency of the boiler. But the major disadvantage of this method is it does not give any clue to the operator as why the efficiency of the boiler is lower. Also, sometimes it can mislead the operator. This is the major disadvantage of direct method. That is why we are moving to the indirect method. Indirect method is also known as heat loss efficiency calculation method. This method can be calculated adding all heat losses fraction and subtracting that with 100. In this method, the blowdown heat loss will not be considered as per American standards. Now, we will discuss the various heat losses that occurs in boiler. Let's take we have boiler. To run boiler, we have to supply the fuel. That fuel may be solid fuel, liquid fuel or gaseous fuel. The amount of fuel given to the boiler let's consider MF. For combustion we have to supply the air. The amount of air supplied let's take MA. The purpose of boiler to generate the steam. Let's take the mass of steam generated as MS. To generate steam we have to supply the water. The amount of water is supplied equal to the amount of steam is generated. After combustion of fuel and air, the dry flue gas will come out from the boiler. In this flue gas only, we have various heat losses that is carried away from the boiler. The first one, heat loss due to the dry flue gas. Heat loss due to the moisture which is present in air. Heat loss due to the moisture present in fuel heat loss due to the hydrogen which is present in fuel heat loss due to the unburnt carbon and carbon monoxide which is present in flue gas heat loss due to the fly ash as well as water mesh these are the various heat loss that occurs in the boiler we will discuss all this elaborately in this coming slides also we have blowdown loss here we are not going to consider blowdown loss. We are going to consider only these six losses. Other than the six losses, we are going to consider unaccounted losses that may be due to radiation or some other purpose. Now we will discuss the heat loss due to the flue gas. Also, how to find out the percentage of heat loss due to the dry flue gas. Let's take for example. This flue gas has the temperature of 150 degrees Celsius and the ambient temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Subtract this both, we get 120 degrees Celsius. Remember, to rise 1 degree Celsius, we have to supply the fuel. So, remember, 120 degrees Celsius we are losing due to the dry flue gas. So, how much amount of fuel we have to supply to increase 120 degree Celsius. It is economically loss. To find out the amount of heat loss due to the dry flue gas, we know del T, this del T. We need to know what is the specific heat for dry flue gas and how much amount of dry flue gas is available. So we can find out the amount of heat loss due to the dry flue gas. It is denoted as QG. G is nothing but gas. Let's take the mass of dry flue gas is mg. The specific heat of dry flue gas is Cpg. Temperature of dry flue gas is Tg. The ambient temperature is Ta. To find out the amount of heat having dry flue gas, Qg is equal to mg Cpg Tg minus Ta. That is flue gas temperature minus ambient temperature. It will be in kilojoule per kg of fuel because it is kg per kg of fuel. 
to find out the percentage of heat loss due to dry flue gas that is percentage of qg equal to qg minus cv that is total heat available per kg of fuel next we will find out the percentage of heat loss due to evaporation of moisture which is present in fuel we know that fuel has some amount of moisture in proximate analysis initially this fuel has one bar pressure that is atmospheric pressure and temperature let's take 30 degrees celsius consider again this dry flue gas as 150 degrees celsius because this moisture should form as water or steam and come out from through flue gas that is why and finally this moisture also has 150 degree celsius and we know this moisture in fuel will be evaporated at 100 degree celsius as dry saturated steam because 100 degree celsius is saturated temperature at 1 bar pressure to find out the amount of heat available or amount of energy available at dry flue gas we know that h is equal to hg during evaporation how much enthalpy is available plus the superheated energy that is cp t superheated minus t saturated so here t saturated is 100 degree celsius t superheated is 150 degree celsius so this is flue gas temperature we can take tg this is the energy available at dry flue gas and to find out the heat carried away that is h minus what is the initial enthalpy that is hf it may be combustion chamber temperature or ambient temperature that is 30 degree celsius it is denoted as qmf moisture present in fuel the mass of moisture is mmf cp of superheated steam that is cmf we can take it is 2.1 and the flue gas temperature is tg ambient temperature is ta the heat carried away by the flue gas denoted as qmf is equal to mass of moisture available in fuel tg is a 100 degree celsius 1 bar you can take 2676 because that is the enthalpy at 1 bar pressure under degree celsius this is 2.1 if they have given question no problem if they have not given let's take this one 2.1 kilojoule per kg kelvin is a flue gas temperature and ambient temperature minus the initial temperature of the fuel we can take saturated liquid it will give the amount of energy available per kg of fuel to find out the percentage of heat loss due to moisture present in fuel that is percentage of QMF, QMF divided by CV. Next we will discuss the percentage of heat loss due to evaporation of moisture present in air. So we know that air also contains dry air and moisture air. If we have the mass of air supplied humidity factor we can find out the amount of moisture available otherwise if they are given the moisture present here we can take directly sometimes in question they might be mentioned the total moisture available in dry flue gas that also we can take whatever we have seen the last slide that will be taken to the this slide also because moisture present let's take it is denoted as qma the mass of moisture present in air ma MA is nothing but moisture present in air, mass of moisture present in air. CP of super steam that is 2.1, dry flue gas temperature, ambient temperature, it is denoted as QMA. The amount of heat carried by the moisture which is present in air alone. For that we take only mass of moisture present in air. The same thing, HG, I told you 2676. You can check the steam table, 1 bar pressure under degree Celsius. You can check the steam table. And this is 2.1 super steam 
and flue gas temperature, ambient temperature. This is initial temperature of air. Sometimes they will give the total moisture available. That time we can use only one formula. We don't want to go for the moisture present in fuel, the moisture present in air. We can take only one formula. We can find out. To find out the percentage of heat loss due to moisture present in air, that is QMA divided by CV. It will give the fraction. Next, we will discuss the percentage of heat loss due to evaporation of water that is formed due to hydrogen present in fuel. Hydrogen present in fuel. We know that hydrogen react with oxygen and form H2O. Again, water formation takes place. The major drawback is we need to find out the amount of hydrogen available, mass of hydrogen available in the fuel. We know that hydrogen H2 react with oxygen and form H2O. Remember, you have only o, one O, make two, here make two, which means four hydrogen react with 32 oxygen, which forms 36 kg of water, which means 4 kg of hydrogen react with 32 kg of oxygen and gives 36 kg of water. Then 1 kg of hydrogen needed 32 divided by 4, which gives 36 divided by 4 kg of water, which means this one we can take 9, which means 1 kg of hydrogen forms 9 kg of water. And we know again 100 degrees Celsius, 150 degrees Celsius dry flow gas, the same procedure as what we have seen the last slide. It is denoted as QWH, water formed due to hydrogen. The specific heat of water or steam, we know that temperature of flue gas Tg, ambient temperature Ta. To find out that this is mass of hydrogen available in fuel. Similarly, Hg, Cp, Tg, Ta, we have seen 2.1, this is 2676 and this is the initially fuel temperature. We can find out the amount of heat carried by the hydrogen present in fuel. To find out the percentage of heat loss, QWH divided by Cv. Next, we will discuss the percentage of heat loss due to unburnt. When we talk about unburnt, we remember carbon and ash. Sometimes carbon is come out from the boiler as carbon monoxide. That is also one of the major drawbacks. It is denoted as QUB. UB is nothing but unburnt. The parameters are required for this mass of ash and calorific value of the ash. Similarly, mass of carbon monoxide and calorific value of the carbon monoxide. Similarly, mass of carbon and calorific value of the carbon. From this, we can find out the heat loss due to the unburned, that is QUB, multiply mass of ash and calorific value, mass of carbon monoxide and calorific value, mass of carbon and calorific value. If any, they have not given, kindly neglect it, it is not an issue. To find out percentage of heat loss due to unburned, that is QUB divided by C. Now, we will discuss the efficiency of the boiler, that is 100 minus Percentage of heat loss due to the dry flow gas. Percentage of heat loss due to the moisture present in fuel. Similarly, moisture present in air. And water formed due to hydrogen present in fuel. Also, the percentage of heat loss due to the unburnt UV. And finally, we add unaccounted losses. Remember, this unaccounted losses is 1 to 2 percentage for small boilers and 0. 2 percentage to 1 percentage for high capacity boilers which we take directly this one and substitute. In next lecture, we will discuss how to find out the mass of dry flue gas, mass of moisture present in fuel, mass of moisture present in air and the hydrogen present in fuel. If they are not given in question, how to find out these parameters that we will discuss in next lecture. If you like this video, kindly like, share to your friends. If you have any doubt, kindly give in comment box, I will reply to you. Also, I will give the material. 
Thank you.